today, the start of another worthless day. I get up in the morning, and I eat. The sun rises, and I eat. The sun sets, and I eat. The morning returns, bringing with it the same day. Another day, another disappointment. Every day might have felt worthless, but I took silver linings where I could find them. At least he was decent enough to give me a smartphone and a laptop. Being sheltered from the outside world, I dove inward, becoming obsessed with whatever I could find online. It's starting up again. Father's rage. People who say home is where the heart is never had a family like mine. Only one thing gave me solace. The occasional text to me by my younger sister, Sinaye. She lived with our mother, and from what I gathered, it was a warm life. That alone was enough to chew on. I stopped getting texts from her a year ago. You trying to make a fool out of me too? First that woman, now everyone else! I'll kill you! My drunken father picked up a hatchet from the floor and approached me. So, this is contempt. A look communicated without a single shred of love. I was going to be killed by my father. I don't care. Not anymore. I wouldn't have to suffer anymore, so it's fine. I wouldn't have to stuff anything in my mouth. But I had one parting wish. I wanted to visit Enigma, a place I had only seen online. Huh? Can't even look me in the eye. Whore of a daughter. <laughs> Two girls born to a shitty mother. No surprise they're both shitty too, huh? You don't belong here. You're both shit! Stop it. Huh? <laughs> oh, shit! Get off me! What the... Let me up! <gasps> hey, what are you trying to pull, you bitch? I won't let you... I won't let you! Hey. My father froze in terror. I stood on top of his stomach. Lifting the hatchet in my hand. Hey! Oh, my God. 
Self-defense. Days after the incident, I was alone. No one else around to care for me. I was dehydrated, on the verge of death. If not for the social worker who discovered me, I would have died. It seemed one of my poor neighbors heard my desperate screams and reported it to the authorities. Only then was I found. Although there was no denying I killed my father. Based on the circumstances, the court saw what I did as an act of self-defense. I was ordered to undergo counseling for three months. Afterwards, I was dismissed from the facility, absolved of my sins. Not that it made the consequences any easier. That man's final moments will haunt me forever. When I close my eyes, I relive the moment. I pray every day for his ghost to leave me. The air was thick with fog, making it difficult to see anything from a distance in this old town. I sat in the back of the black town car, which was stopped in front of a tall, pearly building in the center of town. Surrounding the town was a lush smattering of trees and a vast lake. I felt a warm breeze brush against my cheek as I exited the car. If I squinted hard enough, I could make out mountains standing atop the horizon to the north of town. It was misty here year-round. Some think Leishuara is cursed. Could be the eternal mist. Or... It could be the creepy aura permeating throughout. This may seem like a silly question, but... For the sake of formality, I'll ask. Are you my Toyama? That's right. I am my Toyama. Okay, verified. My, from today on... Wordsworth will be your new home. What happened with your father? I mean, that man was a terrible incident. You did nothing wrong, so please don't worry. My, you're so strong. You did what you had to. You're allowed to be happy. Thank you. Now, let's head inside. Headmistress Midra awaits you. Kamai, I am Midra, headmistress to Wordsworth, the all-girls dormitory. Hello. All-girls dormitory? Personally, I find orphanage to be an unsavory signifier. Our institution prides itself as an academy and a dorm, together. There is no distinction between students with or without family. Indeed. Point well taken. Midra, as I mentioned to you before, this girl here has had something of a tough year. She's moving on well, and she's honest. Let's be sure to give her a big Wordsworth welcome and celebrate her enrollment. Welcome, Mai. We've had many girls like you overcome their childhoods by working hard and supporting one another in harmony. Trust in our staff. Invest in yourself. Find your wings, little butterfly and soon you'll take flight in this world on your own. Women who triumph over all odds are the ones who make a difference. I have many high hopes for you, Mai. In any case, for what reason did you choose our remote town and our esteemed dorm to further your education? I was the one who reached out to her after Mai requested to come here. Because I heard Sanaye was here. Please, let me see her. Sanaye? She's my little sister. She's here, right? Let me see her. My, no. Please, calm down. Hurry, what are you doing? I'm telling you to take me to her. My? Okay, my. Calm down. Take a deep breath. When Mai's parents divorced, they decided the following. That Mai's father would take Mai, and that her mother would take Sanaye. The two girls lived apart since the split. Because of her father's passing, 
We attempted to locate her mother to see if Mai could be reunited with her family. After some investigation, we learned that her mother had passed as well. It was her mother's wish for Sanaye to be sent to Wordsworth, or so it says on her dossier, which explains why Mai, too, had requested to be transferred here. Poor girl. God has presented you with such fearsome challenges because he knew you were tenacious enough to overcome them. Huh? There must be some mix-up with your documents. Sanaye Toyama does not exist in our records. She never has. What? Calm yourself, Mai. It is unladylike to let yourself become flustered. No doubt your travels have been long. Go on to your room and rest. We will assess the situation with Sanaye tomorrow. Please, I assure you that I will assist her in reviewing our records once more. <sighs> Hello there! Ma'am, I'll be the one to carry your bags. Oh, salutations, Mai. Allow me to introduce myself as the head maid, here to help everyone in our dorm. My name is Head Maid Shizu, Shizu Malonis. Nice to meet you. Sure. It's been so long <sighs> since I could cherish being alone. waking her. I'll let her sleep. Where am I?
going to search for hints about Sanai's whereabouts. Guess I could explore the dorm until breakfast. Everyone, I'm Vina Miles. Hopefully my surname rings a bell for you. You can call me your senior. Meet Molly and Pick, two girls who've surrendered to my charisma, who now go out of their way to do my bidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds stupid. What? You say something? Say, do any of you know a girl named Sanaye? I'm the one asking questions here. <laughs> I don't know. Never heard of her. Idiots! Don't answer her! <laughs> hm. Whatever. Hey, you girl. I've got some trash that needs dumping. Why don't you do it for me? That's not my job. Oh, is that sass I detect? Someone wants to take a dip. <laughs> <laughs> How's your bladder doing? <laughs> Come on, get in! <laughs> the law is around here. Wow! All this effort and not a peep from her! <laughs> hey! Better not underestimate me again. I may look sweet, but I'm very sour. <laughs> look at you. So pathetic you couldn't hurt a fly. Seriously. You know, I even killed a pigeon that our class kept as a pet. Ooh! There were blood and guts everywhere. Everyone cried like a bunch of babies. <laughs> Listen up, Mai. Get me mad enough and I could do the same to a person. I'm not like you. Is that so? <laughs> scaredy cat! She's a scaredy cat! Think you could kill me? Do you really? What's your problem? Don't get any closer! Could you kill me? What is your problem? Take my advice. Your bite. Better live up to your bark. Otherwise, you'll look like a moron. Uh, you, you're not getting away with this! You two! Let's take her outside and pin her to the ground. 
Maybe we'll have to cut off those pretty locks of hers! <sighs> Cry, baby! Do it! <laughs> Do it! Cut her ears while you're at it! It's almost breakfast time. Do you think the teachers might catch us? Who cares? This rut pisses me off. <laughs> time to chop off that beautiful head of hair. I won't stop even if you beg. I have sentenced you to execution. There's no turning back now. I said stop. Ah! Oh, now she can scream. <laughs> Serves her right. Okay, everyone, say bye bye to my hair. <laughs> She's <laughs> kind of crazy. There it is. That's what I've been waiting for! Yeah! Hey! Uh, Mina, you're at it again! You better stop or I'll tell my mother! It's Roddy Crap! Let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay? Here, take my handkerchief. They always bully the new girl. They're jerks. Oh, a handkerchief won't be enough. Let me walk you to the showers. Come with me. Name's Rotten. Rotten Dollheart. You can call me Roddy, though. Let's be friends. Oh? Thank you, I guess. But I'm fine alone. What? <laughs> She's not just cute, strong too. Wordsworth, the headmistress, the faculty, and the students all eat together. You must be the new girl. I'm Abigail Williams. I'm the resident advisor around here. I suppose in a regular school, my role would be something akin to a class president. If you ever need anything, I'd be happy to advise. Nice to meet you. Look right as rain, Mai. <sighs> Your soap smells lovely. Mind if I sit here? Why ask when you've already sat? I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> Lord, we are thankful from the bottom of our hearts for this bountiful feast. El Strain, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. El Strain! El Strain, Lord, I thank you. It's a religion followed by everyone in town. With his undying love, we are guided and protected from evil. I see. You didn't eat dinner last night. You must be starving. Want my egg? No. I have a small appetite. Oh, that's no good. 
Sure you got curves, but I saw your ribs under your shirt earlier. The girl's gotta eat. Your butt's not too big either. You don't have to change overnight, but make sure to eat, okay? You watched me earlier? Oh, uh, I didn't watch you shower. You know... <sighs> <laughs> Seems like you two have met. We're meeting to do community service in town after this. Eat up, or you'll be sorry. In town? Oh. Sounds to me like you're going to sweep up around the church. You'd better work hard so you don't tarnish Wordsworth's name. Sarah! No need to be so stern with her before you've even met. <clears throat> Abigail, you go too easy on them. You're setting her up for failure, which is just going to hurt her in the long run. Very well. My, this is Sarah Putnam, one of my very best friends. She's not afraid to speak her mind, but she's kind, I promise. Hopefully you two can become friends. It's called open communication. Nice to meet you. Oh, by the way, there are some strict rules here at the dorm. No one's allowed out past the midnight curfew. The rest, you'll learn. Damn that new girl. Why is everyone fawning over her? Ugh, so annoying. So if she's all buddy-buddy with the RA, do you think that'll be a problem? Who cares? No one can stand in my way. Once we get into town, I'll find a nice ditch to push her into. That'll teach her. <laughs> Good one. Great idea. Maybe she'll even break a bone. Okay, everyone. Please join me in putting our hands together. Many thanks for this meal. Many thanks for this meal. Gather round. It is time to commence community service. Wordsworth only exists thanks to the kindness and donations of our townspeople. So please show your gratitude by working hard for our community. Pair up with your roommates, everyone. Roommate? Come to think of it, I've yet to meet mine. <laughs> Wait, don't tell me. <laughs> Greetings, roommate! <laughs> You're kidding. Okay, then, let's head out. Here, take these instructions. Oh, we're assigned to the church area. <sighs> Don't we have to take our plates away? Uh, the maids handle that, so leave it for them. Well, time for us to go visit the church. <laughs> Vina, you girls will be picking up trash near the forest. What? 